My name is Dara and welcome to another video. I make reading or writing content every week so if you're interested go ahead and subscribe. Um, but yeah so this video is going to be me buddy reading a book with my sister. So last month we buddy read The Death of Vivek OG and it was kind of a, a miss for both of us. I Sorry about my mess. I'm literally folding clothes and like doing laundry. You can hear it. Um, but the sun is going to go down soon, so we needed this light to intro. And we've got a visitor. Hi, pup. Azzy. Okay, anyways, back to our video. So this month we are reading Call Your Daughter Home by, oh, I can't even remember the author right now. It starts with an S, I think. Um, it'll be on the screen. So I don't have the physical book. I'm reading the ebook, and my sister is doing the audio version while she works. So... Uh, I'm hoping we do this every month, kind of like our own little book club. It's fun, and this time I will be getting her um, reactions as well, but it'll be through her messages, so when we talk. However, I would love to maybe do a video call and share her opinions like that with you if she would be okay with it. I don't know, but she will get her opinion on it too, so... Um, yeah, I guess. Oh, and okay, so I know my videos are almost always spoiler free, but I do think my buddy read one with Missy is at least this time around, it's going to have spoilers in it. So I'm letting you know that right now. If you plan to read this and you don't want to hear about it, you should not watch this until you have. And then I would love to have a conversation with you. And my sister sometimes watches, so she would probably love to talk to you too. Maybe. I don't know. I'm speaking for her, but anyways, so. I have started the book actually I started it last night before I went to sleep I have only read one chapter but it was pretty heartbreaking I'm gonna be honest with you um, so in this book we are following Annie I think is her name um, she came from a poor 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 family she was married off at 13 or 14 I can't remember but she was married off super young to this guy who was supposedly a great guy and um, then all the weevil weevils the bugs that eat insects right um that tear up crops and stuff so there was a huge infestation of this and um it destroyed his livelihood so he turned to drinking he's a raging alcoholic and they have four girls no son and he's mad at her about that he's just like mad at the world right so he takes it out on her he beats the crap out of her all the time so in the first chapter you kind of see her you see her take her children her two that she has left with her to her brother who is raising her other two because she's too poor she cannot afford her children right this also takes place back in the 20s so like times were hard you know times were really hard back then and you just see her struggle i do really like i know i'm only in chapter in but i love the way she writes and i part of me okay at the end of the first chapter she kills her husband so good right um because she has finally had enough but it seems like it's been years of this or like it's been an ongoing issue with her husband because even her brother is like when are you gonna get it together and take care of these kids um what's up with your husband like he needs to piss off or whatever and so she finally just shoots him and she is getting a job uh, in a sewing circle. So that's where I'm at now. Um, okay, so it is 4.30 here, by the way, 4.30 on Wednesday. Not that the day matters, but uh, in the evening slash late afternoon. So it is 1.30 in Central Standard, which is where my sister's in. So anything I read, I'm gonna have to update you guys first because Missy's asleep, right? She's got work in a few hours, so the time difference does stink with my sister. Actually, with all my family, I miss talking to them. But it's fine. Uh, we get snippets in in the morning and in the evening, and that's good. So I am going to read. I'd love to have, like, I don't know. Let's set a goal. I would love to read, like, four chapters before my sister wakes up for work so we can talk. Because I know she got to read a lot more than me. Last night I read until I passed out. 
So anyways, this is a long intro, but welcome to the reading vlog, the buddy read. What are we going to call it? Hmm. If you can think of any fun names for like a buddy read that's every month with your sister, um, let me know. I want to come up with something kind of catchy and fun and hopefully we can talk our third sister into doing this, but she's full-time student, so she doesn't really read a whole lot of fiction during the school semester, but we'll see. I will talk to you guys in just a little bit. It's nine o'clock. The person we started the book with, her name is Gertrude, not Anne. Anne is the older white woman who owns the sewing circle, um, like the little business making clothing. And also she has the daughter of a former slave, but um, she is there like house maid or whatever so gertrude came to ann and said i know you're hiring can i get this job i have two dollars for a deposit to live because they have houses on their property that people can live in she was like here's my deposit and they're like fine you can start um, on wednesday we'll take the rent out of your pay so she did that um but so she's the one with four daughters right um two are already living with her brother she took the other two to her brother and was like, please help me. <laughs> I can't raise them just right now. Give me like a week or two. And he was like, I can't take the sick one because Mary the youngest is very sick. So he took, so he's now her brother is watching three of her girls and then she kills her husband. Okay, um, he maybe didn't deserve it, but uh, I don't like to say people deserve to die, but he was abusive and an alcoholic and um, just not a good human being, let alone husband. She, Gertrude, the girl's mother, gave her youngest daughter Mary to Retta, who is the house worker, um, the black lady who works for Anne. So I know this is very confusing, but it's really interesting. They're all like, stories are all like together. Retta is trying to keep Mary alive. She's like skin and bones, and she made her drink uh, this home brewed tea and it made her like vomit it up because she had like ringworm and stuff but not only did she have ringworm but when she vomited she had maggots in her vomit like the life that these children were in is just soul crushing i cannot stand it so i am over here reading this book just absolutely terrified that mary is gonna die my gosh i don't want her to die she but her fever won't break and she won't eat but so far my favorite character is Retta. Uh, I just love her and her story and it just is so, I don't know, I just really love her. So that is my current update. I'll talk to you at my next update. Maybe tonight or tomorrow. I don't know. I'm going to read for a little bit longer though because like I said, I'm actually just loving this book. Mm, it's sad though back with another update so i am now on page 121 um about to start chapter 16 <sighs> wow this book is definitely emotional if you hear the clicking kai is playing a video game so he's like button mashing okay he wants stop it he wants to show you what game he's playing it's claire's hero macadamia 2 <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, so as I said before, we have Gertrude, who was the poor woman with four kids who killed her husband. So chapter 15, which I just finished, was about her, and she just realized, so she was taking apart um, old dresses from this house that she is now renting. The lady before passed away in it, and so she's taking her place at her job, and she gets to rent the house out too. So uh, her old dresses were now hers, and she was like um, taking them apart and making new dresses for her and her girls. So she went to, t like she kept telling her 13 year old, take off your dress so I can make a new pattern and make you a new dress, you know, if you want any clothes. And she was like, I don't care, mom, I don't want it. So she's like fighting her to get her dress off. It's like all dramatic. And then she says she notices once she like practically tears the dress off. <laughs> Thank you. Why can't I show them a kiss? Thank you. Um, anyways, she notices that her daughter's belly and breasts are a lot more full than they should be for someone uh, 13 years of age. So her 13-year-old is pregnant. 
Uh, we don't know how or well actually she did mention there was this boy that she'd been like seeing but um 13 huh i know this happened in the 20s but like god damn that's way young um, and so annie she is the lady who runs the sewing circle which is where gertrude is working and she rents the house from her two daughters for the last 15 years they have not spoken or had any contact like they had a falling out she went to surprise one of them because she is 70 now and doesn't want to like die without them and then so her granddaughter actually shows up thank you on the porch and is like oh well who are you and she goes i'm your mama's mom and that makes me your grandmother and she was like no my grandma is dead my mom told me so so <laughs> she's telling her kids that her mom is dead but she's very much alive because they have like this big falling out and then we also have retta who is the colored um housework for annie and she was taking care of mary one of gertrude's daughters so um <sighs> she can see ghosts or like um people who have passed so she can not only see mrs walker who is the lady who lived in this house before who is now dead but she can also see gertrude's husband so she knows that he's dead she's not sad about it and she's certainly not gonna like tattle because everyone in town knew alvin was a piece of garbage who used to beat up you know his wife so that's where i'm at right now it's very intense very intense and yeah i'm just gonna i was gonna stop reading for a little bit and like play a game or something but i think i'm gonna just keep reading and <clears throat> see where it goes from here but i thought i'd give you an update before i forget all this emotional turmoil that this book is putting me through hello it's pretty late um it's like 11 30 at night i'm over here just eating a snack minding my business reading my book right and it goes and makes me cry like the audacity you know um nelly is a native american who comes and helps every summer during like a busy part uh, but she comes to annie's house and helps retta to get everything ready i don't remember it's like just a busy time right with harvesting and all that stuff so this year nelly was pregnant and in the middle of the night uh nelly comes or nelly's uh father and betrothed come and they're like listen she's having the baby but something's wrong i don't know what to do and so she goes to help her and then she dies during child's for or child's birth, during child birth and she just she dies and i actually started crying because it's just sad well and it's also because um of the way it was written too it says nelly's breast rises and falls it does not rise again and then her baby, which is Yi Ye Memburi Ye, opens her mouth and wails. My gosh, I hate it. I don't like that. I'm so sad. So I'm only on page 157. I haven't made that much progress since yesterday. We were busy today, very busy. I spent hours editing a video. I did a bunch of cleaning outside. We cooked out on the grill, and it was just a lot. But Obviously, I'm sitting here reading now, so I hope to read quite a bit before falling asleep. If anything else crazy happens, I'll tell you, but I'm so sad. Hello, friends. Um, welcome back. It's been a couple of days. Um, I didn't read yesterday at all. Uh, and yeah, but I'm almost done with Call Your Daughter Home and wow it's so good um i have 20 or 21 pages left but i did want to do an update and tell you a few of the things that happened so miss annie uh while her husband was away with like all the men in the town really she went to get the butcher uh barn ready like get all the knives and stuff out because there are these other younger boys that couldn't go on the tobacco selling trip they were gonna come butcher a hog for their family. So she went to get all of the knives and utensils and stuff like that ready um, for them. And then she accidentally cuts her hand open like badly to the point where she needs stitches. But she noticed when she tried to put the knife away um, that it won't go in all the way. There's something like blocking it. So there's like this much of the blade showing. 
And so she like digs in there and finds a pair of girls panties, like children's underwear. So she goes through all of the like sheaths, you know, every knife has its own little like case thing. So she goes through and she finds, I want to say like five pairs or something of girls underwear. <sighs> so obviously she just found out that her husband is at the very least a pervert. He may be molesting children. She's not sure, but yeah, so she found that out. And so, um, when he comes home from his trip, she, uh, they get into a huge fight or whatever and she stops eating. She decides she's done. She has no interest in living a life by his side anymore and she stops eating. Like, she really does too for weeks. She doesn't eat. Uh, she does drink milk for a while, but um, stops that too for a few days and it's just, wow. I mean, I understand like the betrayal and like the devastation for these girls who suffered what her husband did, but like to override your basic need of food is very powerful, like wow. So her son just broke down while they were at camp, which is like this thing they do every year. Like I said, I think before, yeah, it's like a feast and they all go and it's, everyone gets their own little cabin and there's like 60 cabins in like a huge half circle. Um, and then in the middle is where everyone like congregates and like spends time together. And, um, so her husband was like, you're still coming. I don't care what you say. So they drag her not eating, like weighing nothing body, but at camp, her son finally breaks down and is like, mom, you can't do this. They're like, dad is going to destroy this. He wants to sell her business and it's just a mess. And so she just took her first bite of food and it made me so happy um which is good because I have felt like crap all day my head is just pounding like ibuprofen helped for about two hours and now it's already coming back so uh I have 20 pages left though I'm gonna do that and then I don't even know if I'm gonna do anything besides try to sleep it off uh, I might start a physical book, but I definitely want to put the screens away for the night. So, uh, but I am going to finish this book tonight. So I will either update you when I'm finished or in the morning, but yeah, I've got 20 pages left and I'm excited. This book is really good. It's really emotional and like sad, but Anyways, I'll, I'll talk about that in the wrap up when I'm done, but loving this book so much. Hello friends and welcome to the end of this reading vlog uh, buddy read video. So I actually finished reading this book a little over a week ago, like, like a week and a half ago, but I just never did my wrap up or my final thoughts. So I wanted to do that now. I've just sat and edited the video except for the ending, just so I could, you know, see anything else I wanted to talk about. Because even though it's been a week and a half, I still remember this video quite well. Good, okay, we're good. Even though it's been a minute, I remember it quite well. And I also wanted to give you guys my sister's input because we did discuss it. Yeah, it is going up a little late. Sorry about that, but it is what it is. So. Um, first with the ratings, I gave this book four out of five stars and my sister gave it five out of five. Uh, she really enjoyed the book as well. So she said that her favorite character was Retta and I would have to agree with that. Retta can see spirits like otherworldly, like people who have passed. She had a really good friend who was white, which was kind of like the talk of the town for a while. Um, but after she passed, she could still see, Retta could still see her friend's spirit, like, lingering. And, yeah, that was really interesting. So, she had this, like, spiritual connection with, um, people who had passed. And it was honestly really beautiful. It wasn't, like, creepy or anything. It was beautiful. And she could, like, sense death in a way. And it was very, like, more of a spiritual thing and not, like, a horror kind of thing. But... I did forget to mention that. So that was also why the death of Nellie really hit me hard. And there was a part in the book also, there's a hurricane 
and in the 20s they didn't obviously have as good of weather knowledge as I do now but they had the barometer to check pressures and stuff and so no one had checked the barometer because there was diphtheria diphtheria dysteria something was going around and people were dying it killed Gertrude's brother and sister-in-law nearly killed Gertrude she showed up in the middle of a hurricane and it was wild so she was on the brink of death and Retta like tackled her like held her down and like forced stuff to come out of her throat, right? Um, which was like the sickness and helped heal her in like some crazy like spiritual magical way. Um, so there was like, this was obviously historical fiction with like a sprinkle of maybe some fantastical elements. Um, some people don't consider that fantasy um, and that's fine. But back to my sister, <laughs> that was a tangent or something. Um, it says, Retta was my favorite. I feel like she lived a tragic life, which, with such instinct, but she knew she had to keep moving forward no matter what, because that is all she could do. I also felt like she is so spiritually torn. So her navigating through that, throughout moments in the book until the end when she finally feels that comfort and freedom. Heartbreaking, but beautiful, which I agree with. So in the end, Retta dies. And it like actually crushed me i was so sad retta died um she was actually shot by edwin which is Anne's husband the one who was caught with children's panties um and i didn't really touch on this much but he used to give the girl a nickel and then like put his hand up their dress um and i don't know if every time he took a souvenir of panties but sometimes he did and in the end he ended up shooting Retta because she like got in the way she tried to like stop a dispute and um, then Gertrude then shoots and kills Edwin okay and Gertrude listen no let's finish with Retta okay let's finish with Retta Retta was obviously beautiful and spiritual and I just adored her so after she passed her the ending for her was it literally brought tears to my eyes because she said she found herself in a meadow like there was trees around her but she was in this clearing and she could hear her husband singing for her he was calling for her and um he comes through the like through the trees holding their daughter who had passed away when she was seven or eight um holding her so they were all now deceased but they were all together and it even said in the book so um he had he was missing part of one of his legs so he was an amputee survivor so in the end um and it said and he was uh he was whole again there was no broken pieces um and he just strode in there without a limp and i mean there was nothing wrong with him as a disabled bodied person but just to know that he's not hurting anymore and he has his leg and he can walk through holding their baby well their daughter she wasn't a baby but it was beautiful okay it was seriously beautiful brought tears to my eyes gertrude okay missy could not stand her right i don't think she ever yeah she said i think she is selfish completely selfish kill your abusive husband that is like burning bed type of badassery which is like if you don't know it's a movie where she finally has enough of his shit abusive stuff and she literally lights the house on fire while he's asleep like knocked out alcohol sleep so, however i feel like she forgot the nurturing aspect of motherhood she took on this life and wanted so badly to turn things around but she was so harsh on her children and quite honestly ungrateful as hell retta literally saved both her and little mary's life and and this bitch really wanted to steal money and treat retta like garbage that is true so gertrude uh, yeah, Retta saved Mary and her own life. She saved Gertrude and Mary's life. And at the end of the book, Mary confessed that, or Mary, Gertrude confessed that when she had moved into her house that Anne owned as her boss, uh, that she had rented. So it was the same house that Retta's previous white friend had also rented. And she had passed away in there, um, and there had been a box with a dress in it, and it said, take out the hem. You'll need to. And Anne, or Anne, 
Gertrude ended up actually taking the hem out because she stole the dress and was going to use it for her children. And she found $11 hemmed in this dress. So, which doesn't sound like a lot, but you guys know, in the 1920s, that was a freaking ball in money, okay? That was enough for one month of rent and then some. So, I really do understand when times are hard. You do what you have to, especially with your children. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're, you gotta do what you gotta do. However, she never gave her the money, ever. And Gertrude never gave Red of the money. And I do think that was really wrong because um, she had just moved in this house. She had a job, like things were looking up, things were fine. The right thing to do would have been to give her the money. Uh, in the end, Retta was like, that's fine, you need it more than me. Like, I don't even want what's left of it anymore because she paid for a few dollars to see a doctor or something. And, yeah, I think they had $8 left, which was still a lot of money back then, but even then, Retta was like, you need it more than I do. I don't want it back. Um, but, yeah, Gertrude definitely... I saw growth in her a little bit at the end of the book. Like, you could tell she was like becoming a better human however i don't think that excuses some of her actions as a mother uh back then tough love was a lot a lot more heavy-handed than it is now and you know every, we grow and evolve as humans so things have shifted since then back then this was somewhat normal to just be very strict and very harsh with your kids but she went looking for her oldest daughter, her second oldest, because her oldest got pregnant, and uh, found her in the woods with Edwin, and his hand was up her skirt. And when I tell you, she didn't shoot him right then and there. She had her gun. I don't remember why. Oh, yeah. She brought her gun out there because she could sense something was amiss. You know, like, not necessarily the daughter, but, like, in general. So she brought her gun out there looking for her daughter, and... Um, he tried to give the daughter a nickel and she just never said anything. She said nothing, even though she found a grown man with it. He would have been dead. I don't care about different classes. He would have been dead. So that's Gertrude in a nutshell on my end. And you heard about Missy's and let's see. And the other main character, I liked her a lot. I do hate that she like stopped eating and all that stuff over what her husband did like she felt so betrayed but honestly she was punishing herself and she even says that she's like i deserve this i am married to a monster what have i done my children have gone through god knows what because her daughter she had two daughters and two sons her two daughters had uh they left and they tried to tell her i don't know she was basically ignoring them and her her husband was like get out you're ungrateful you're not allowed to be here anymore and later when she found out about the underwear and everything she kind of was like wait a minute is that why you were so adamant about them leaving like did you do something to them and it never came out whether or not it actually was happening to his own children but it is safe to assume that it is a strong possibility that he was at the very least taking their panties and if he's putting his hand up other girls dresses it could be something that happened to his own children so she felt so much guilt that she decided she wanted to die and she stopped eating and all that so it was pretty intense uh she did come out of it for her children her son begged he was like please i'm begging you not to do this like we need you i need you don't leave me alone with him he's a monster and then she was like, okay, you're right. Like, I I need to stay here for my kids. Like, I wasn't there for them, unbeknownst to her, like, this was happening. But, you know, she it finally clicked to her that she can live. It's not her fault. Like, it's not her fault what her husband did, and she truly had no idea. Um, but, anyways, I liked Anne a lot. Missy thought Anne was a snob in the beginning, but once her story unfolded and we learned that she had been married to the devil for so many years, she just could not fathom it, right? So this poor lady always questioned herself as a mother and to learn about the father of her children uh, was abusing and had a sick fetish for children. Oh my God. Yes. Agree. 100%. So 
that is gonna be it for this video um definitely obviously trigger warnings for child abuse spousal abuse sexual abuse like if there's abuse that you can think of it's probably in this book but it was still yes it was heart-wrenching but it was heartwarming it was honestly beautiful there it was a beautiful book I really enjoyed it I did and Missy obviously did too she gave it five out of five I gave it four out of five it was incredible so yeah we are gonna be doing this again this month because it's technically May when this video is going on. I'm sorry about that but we're doing it again this month and we are gonna be reading Fates and Traitors by Jennifer Chivarini which I am so stoked about I, you guys know I love Jennifer Chivarini and yeah I'm super excited about this book and my other sister so there's three of us she's reading with us so I'm so excited um can't wait to see what Becca thinks about this book but yeah I hope you guys enjoy this video and don't worry they will get better as they go along um I'm not used to doing spoilery uh videos these this series will probably be the one and only spoilery series that I ever do but who knows uh they will get better as they go along but uh if anything i hope you guys do pick up this book it was really good and beautiful and i hope you guys enjoyed it and i will see you guys in my next video bye when your stars have burnt out and your heart makes no sound i'll find validity